I just have to say this right now um, in my car because I'm too embarrassed to record this somewhere else, but essentially I googled some things on relationships and I read an article on psychology today, um, you know, one of the top, top things and it has to do with uh, my questions that I was asking Google had to do with, you know, is it better to fix a relationship or is it better to leave a relationship and find someone new? What are the pros and cons of divorce? Um, and uh, I'm just going to say it. The information that's out there right now, uh, as far as relationship advice, it's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Like, if you want to be in and out of relationships for the rest of your life, please, by all means, follow what these popular articles on Google say. Follow the social media trend that says, oh, if it doesn't serve you, like c cut out things that no longer serve you, or um, if they don't make you happy, like, you know, you're in an abusive relationship, you're in a toxic relationship, if, you know, if, if you're not happy or if you're not living your dreams or whatever, um, Society in America has become so self-absorbed that it, and, and, and there's been such a onslaught of attack to divide relationships over selfish reasons, thinking like valuing and uplifting values of independence and freedom and um, living life on your own terms and it has completely dissolved and destructured what holds a family together and what makes a family and a family unit. And the fabric of a healthy society is the family, the foundation of the family. And if you don't have kids and it's just the two of you practicing prioritizing the third entity of the we of this relationship, not the me, not the you, but the we, prioritizing that is where long-term fulfillment comes from. Because if you are constantly trying to push people out of your life or look for red flags or give yourself excuses or reasons why you shouldn't be in a relationship with this person, why this person is not perfect enough for you or not compatible enough for you or causes you stress or like all of the, the complaining, whining things that can chipper in your brain or that social media uh, memes want to blast all over your feeds. Um, if you're subscribing to those things, you're gonna end up in your 70s, if you live that long, pretty much alone or with people who don't truly know you or haven't watched you transformed or like truly loved you for all of the crappy parts of you that exist because it's not just them, it's you too. And if you truly want to have that sense of fulfillment with somebody that you share life with, that you are a life partner with and do life with and live your life with somebody that understands you, you've got to stop prioritizing yourself and your selfish wants and your selfish needs. So all the advice out there, I warn you, maybe just stop reading it because it's crap. And if you want actual good marriage advice, you should go back to principles and values of what real love is because real love is not a feeling it's not a butterfly it's not um, goo goo eyes it's not it's not easy it's not even real love until it's difficult and that's when real love comes I'm just gonna put it out there the ultimate definition in a Christian or post-Christian modern society, which is what America is. If you don't know, that's where America came from. America was pretty much founded because of the desire for religious freedom to pursue God um, according to a way that was different than what the 
let's have, I don't want to get too much, too deep into this, the Christendom, how they wanted them to be. So point being separation of church and state happened so that people could worship God period. Not so they could get away from God, but so that they could worship God without fear. So if you go back to biblical principles, the definition of love is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. I really don't think that he wanted to be tortured and put on a cross and die the way that he did. I don't think that's what he wanted to do. I don't think that felt good for him. In fact, we have evidence in the scriptures that talk about him being so stressed out about it, asking his father, is there any other way that we can do this? Can you take this cup from me? Like, I, I don't think I can, I don't know if I can bear it. He was crying or was he crying blood, sweating blood? Either way, that's pretty intense, <laughs> but he's the definition of love. Arms wide open, heart exposed. That is the definition of love. So it's not about do you want this or that? It's do you have the capacity to choose to love when you don't want to? And I truly believe that if you start loving the people in your life who are there by choice, by divine providence, your partner that you're with, if you choose to love them like Jesus loves, you're always going to end up more satisfied and you're always going to end up getting more of what you truly want than what you think you want right now. I'm off my soapbox.